give it a few seconds. You are live. All right. So, yeah, my mommy has been on my mind and uh, in a good way. How old was she when she passed? I don't remember. She had just turned 73. Oh, she was not on. Yeah, she, wow. she had turned 73 on July 22nd. And then she passed two weeks later on August 8th. Wow, she's fairly young. Compared. She was young, and I, you know, and and in and in good health. I, you know, I really, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think it was necessary. But mm -hmm. what it is. Mm -hmm. So we are here in a chapter. You got to look at the chapter. Yeah. In a chapter that um, is about mothers and daughters. It's uh, Chanda's, Chanda's love letter to her mother. And, um, you know, so between the anniversary of my mother's passing on August 8th and the chapter and what not. Uh, my mother, Loga B. Odom, uh, has been on my mind quite strongly this week. So, um, well, we might as well go ahead and get started since Gio is not going to be joining us tonight, unfortunately. But, um, and I'm barely awake. And <laughs> you're barely awake. So this is shaping up to sound like a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> and, um, um, but Gio did send me some of uh, some her comments, her overall uh, comment on the book. She also sent a song uh, to contribute. Did you see the um, music playlist that I did? No, I didn't have a chance to look at it. We talked about it, but I didn't yeah. look at it. So maybe, um, maybe when we get down toward the end of the meeting, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll uh, go to the playlist and, um, and, uh, we can listen to the song that Gio added. Um, it's not on my playlist yet, but I'm going to add it in. So let me share my screen. Uh, agenda share. So, um, you know, so I was just, just saying, um, this is uh, our last discussion on the disordered cosmos. And normally that would mean that we would um, start to talk about next steps. But since one of our key crew members, Georgette Moses, um, is not able to join us tonight, um, um, then I guess we'll, we'll do a follow-up meeting um in a couple of weeks uh when geo can can join us um and um you know it, that'll probably be a private meeting right yeah um, but tonight we mainly just want to talk about um uh well let me go ahead and just do the whole welcome welcome uh, everyone, anyone, to the Global Black Feminist Reading Circle. Uh, we are in session 18, the 18th uh, public book discussion that we've had. Uh, tonight is our last night. We've been here for uh, 14 weeks. Um, 
discussing the disordered cosmos by Chanda Prescott Weinstein, the disordered cosmos, a journey into dark matter, space time, and dreams deferred. Um, you can learn more about <coughs> Global Black Feminist Reading Circle on our website called Reading Changes Lives dot wordpress dot com. Uh, we also have pages on Facebook uh, and, of course, our YouTube channel where all of our videos from all 18 books uh, are archived uh, on YouTube. Um, so I'll go ahead and read the... Um, the summary and of course my picture at the top. This is uh, Chanda Prescott Weinstein on the left, her mother Margaret Prescott on the right. And in the middle, it's cut off a little bit, but that's an <clears throat> example of a Lagrangian, I think it's pronounced. And tonight's, um, tonight we're talking about the postscript called Dear Mama, This Is What My Freedom Dreams Look Like. And the summary, Chanda and her mother. I could use this a little bit bigger. Move my, I'm moving things around here, okay. Uh, it seems many of us humans wish our parents had done some things differently or even been different people. <clears throat> Yet we get who we get and become who we become. As adults, we can look back and bemoan the parents we were given or appreciate their strengths and weaknesses. Ultimately, we are now in the driver's seat of our own lives, empowered to take ourselves in the directions we choose and feed our spirit the kind of gas we wish we had received as children. There are many complex mathematical formulas, but probably none that can show us what our lives might have looked like had we been born to different parents. The postscript, Dear Mama, this is what my freedom dreams looks like, is Chanda's open love letter to her mother, Margaret Prescott. Here she thanks her mother for sacrifices. Uh, she thanks her mother for her sacrifices so that Chanda could fulfill her potential, recognizes what she did not always understand or appreciate about her mother, acknowledges how much she learned from her mother's example and the ways in which she is so much like her and expresses her gratitude for the woman who made sure she held fast to her dreams. The postscript also includes Chanda Prescott Weinstein's description of what freedom looks like to her. Naturally, it begins with Lagrangians. The Disordered Cosmos, A Journey into Dark Matter, Space, Time, and Dreams Deferred, a love song by Chanda Prescott Weinstein, has explored many of the ways in which our world is out of order, wrong, unfair, and unjust. Racism, sexism, and colonialism top the list for the people of color, the world's majority, the women, and the occupied nations that have been forced to find ways to cope with this disorder. But the disorder touches us all in one way or another. It includes violence and militarism and our favorite boogeyman, capitalism. Our disordered cosmos is at home with homophobia, transphobia, totalitarianism, and global boiling. At times it appears our species can do nothing right and is racing itself toward extinction from the universe 
that would surely be at peace without us. Yet perhaps there is value in the disorder that our tiny brains simply cannot fathom. This vast universe that hosts all of us sees and knows things our most sophisticated formulas and instruments cannot calculate and detect. Like children who don't comprehend the choices our parents make, perhaps our universe has insisted we experience disorder as a prerequisite to appreciating order. Some few among us hold fast to our dreams of finding better ways of being, ways that are expansive enough and bold enough to hold our great diversity, ways that allow each human being to fulfill their potential and offer all life forms the conditions needed for their best state of existence. This is a place where trees and flowers can grow and thrive, animals can graze, and oceans may freely flow. Shonda Prescott Weinstein is such a human. She is bringing her complex brain and considerable talents to bear on the greatest challenges our species face. She cannot do it alone, and she doesn't have to. I know there are others among us doggedly clutching our hopes, dreams, and determination to find better ways of being for all of us, to find order in our universe. Thank the stars and the heavens above for the brilliance, the companionship, and the leadership of Chanda Prescott Weinstein on the long, long journey ahead and not a minute too soon. Uh, you feel like reading a question or you want me to read? I'll have you read. I, I know you're tired. Yeah. Been gr grandmothering all day. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's, it's, it's as much work as raising your own kids. I mean, but, girl, I thought it was time to relax. So, this is question one. The postscript Dear Mama, this is what my freedom dreams look like, is Chanda's open love letter to her mother, Margaret Prescott. She begins naturally with LeBron jeans. Knowing that her mother and probably most of us will never quite grasp what a Lagrangian is, she attempts an explanation anyway. Here's what I took from it. A Lagrangian is an equation that expresses the most fundamental properties of a physical system by factoring in elements of future, past, and motion to describe the system's evolution and elements of energy and movement, potential energy and mass. Let's use our words to play with pieces of this mathematical equation and relate it to the Black community in America. Given what you know of our community's past and its forward and backward motion, how does the future look to you? Considering what you know of the Black community's potential energy including aspects like health, education, and economic indicators. How do you see our capacity for forward progress? Please tell us why you reached these conclusions. Uh, one way of looking at energy is to say positive energy interactions result in something good, such as having a fire to cook food and keep warm in the woods. Negative energy interactions result in something bad, such as having a fire in the house that is not controlled and ends up doing damage to the house, according to the Rochester Museum of, and Science Center. How do you see the impact of overall energy in the Black American community as mostly positive or mostly negative? How about in the wider community of Americans, mostly positive or mostly negative? What do positive and negative energies look, sound, or feel like in humans? What are some of the things that influence whether our personal energy is positive or negative? What are some things we can do to change our personal energy from negative to positive? Is such change desirable? Why or why not? And when it comes to human perspectives, they're often described as optimistic, realistic, 
or pessimistic? What do you see as the strengths and weaknesses of each perspective? So basically what I'm trying to do here is take a Lagrangian, not a real Lagrangian. <laughs> But but look at, look at energy, positive energy, negative energy, and and talk about what we see going on in the world, what direction it looks like it's taking us. Well, we just spoke about optimism, realism, and pessimism. So. That's so difficult because we're in 2023 and it, a lot of factors come into play. Environment. Um, social media, AKA journalism. and a whole lot of other stimuli that are just meeting each other in a perfect storm. It's really hard to tell because social media, AKA journalism, if we look at that and we wanna measure the, the energy in our community, it wouldn't look very good. If we use social media, and journalism to do that. On a positive point, I know we have, our communities are progressing. We have to, because we have to survive and hopefully thrive. Of course, social media and uh, journalism, um, positive energies and positive things in our community um, doesn't always sell well in America. So we have to kind of look beyond that. So I'm so optimistic because I know that we only see a small part of it. I don't live in our community per se to be able to, to know what's going on, but from living as long as I have, I know that we're always steady moving forward. We have no choice. Educational wise, we're moving forward. We have more black doctors, healers than we've ever had, um, more, more educators, um, and again, if we go by social scientists. media, science, or, oh, it's, it particularly scientists. And science, it's, and that's another thing, science is just so broad. You know, we have Chandra, the physics. We have all types of doctors, doctors. We have all kinds of research scientists, technological scientists, and we're really shaking and moving. Again, social media and journalism that does not show, that does not sell. You know, so we don't see a lot of that because um, God forbid Black America is moving forward. And also too, that might be a good thing because every time we make have progression, every time it's known to be moving forward, you know what happens. So that could be a negative thing and a positive thing. Realism, you know, I, I can't even talk about that because it's, I'm having out-of-body experiences every day. So I'm struggling every day to try to figure out <laughs> what's real and what's not. Um, but then again, going back to optimism, we don't want to have toxic optimism because that can be dangerous to our health and our well-being. We still have to be realist by trying to maintain our optimism and trying to keep the pessimism at a low. Although it's not looking good, again, we don't see everything that's going on. Um, we get a small glimpse of it, but I, I, I am positive that we are doing, um, we are progressing like every minute of the hour. As a matter of fact, my uh, granddaughter, Addison, today she had a Haitian um, anesthesiologist. She had a uh, Jamaican um, intravenous uh, specialist. 
she had a um I met a black physical therapist at Yale New Haven. All these people were taking care of her. So I just wish social media would show that. I saw it today. <laughs> I saw a lot of black professionals um, in Yale New Haven. And as a matter of fact, I saw so many in one room. I wasn't sure whether, actually, I, I, I talked to my I said, are we at a black convention? Because, no, being honest with you, norm, the hospitals that I'm normally exposed to, um, and of course, New Haven is, is very diverse, you would never see that many Black folks in any hospital, much less in the room. But the day I was like, well, okay. <laughs> I remember that's said, well, I need to read a Black mention. Did they not tell me something? And it was very refreshing. Very refreshing. And that's the part we don't see. I saw it all the day. Mm-hmm. That's what we don't see. But what, what we see is, you know, Pookie shooting each other oh, on the street, girl. and and you know being dragged away in chains, you know, off to prison. That's what we see, and that's what we see, and and that's why it's so important, you know, what mm-hmm. what we feed our brains, mm-hmm. and you know, normally between the two of us. I usually play the optimist, but I'm not really in that mood today. Uh oh. Um, I was. <laughs> and I'm so I'm so positive today. I, I know, I know. We <laughs> when you said you were having an out of body experience, we've switched by. <laughs> yes, I'm more optimistic. I'm, I'm sorry, I must be, be slipping. I'm gonna be Vanita. I saw a story, uh, I heard a story today. It was Rachel Maddow talking about the JR-15. Have you heard of this? No. It's an AR-15 made for toddlers. I kid you you not, (laughs) Benita. I kid you not. I'm done. I'm done. It's the it's the JR, the junior AR-15. I'm done. With real bullets. Um, oh, oh, well, that must be in Florida. Because remember, in Florida, as soon as you're born, you can have a gun, you need no permit, <laughs> you need no nothing. It's it's a lighter weight and a smaller design than the regular AR-15 but the same concept. So as I was listening to it, I wanted to say to you, you you know how you love children, but I hope you're not running around picking up strange babies you see sitting around because sitting around that Mom. little bastard might have a jam 15. <laughs> well, see, I'm glad you told me that because I've seen a couple of shady babies. I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> so you know, I love, I love children. But I have seen a couple shady toddlers lately. <laughs> yes. And I didn't want to say anything because you know I, you know, and I always, you know, you know me. Well, you know, the, the children are, are born into so and so and they can yeah. But I have seen, and that has been of you know, all nationalities, whether they're Asian shady babies, yeah. <laughs> whether they're black shady baby, white shady baby. I have seen a few shady toddlers. And they said some things that's pretty shady. My children were children for a long time, you know. And I look at it back to even Dean. They were like age appropriate. I'm so happy that we were living in the era where they could grow as they, they normally should. But now, them toddlers turn around and say, Hi, sweetie, how are you? Don't call me, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> and they three. <laughs> so, did you have a good time today? Did you learn new things, or do new <laughs> things, or go outside and explore at nursery school? We don't do that in nursery school. <laughs> we, we, we do our gun drills. <laughs> we do our gun drills. We don't do no tuck and roll either because there's no fire. Ooh, we, I, we don't have a playground. We have a shooting range. <laughs> don't talk too loud because let me tell you something. <laughs> Capitalism where there's a dollar to be made, they're going to make it. The next thing you're going to see is commercials on TV. Instead of having to go to romper rooms, 
Yes. They're going to go, they go take from ages three to six and seven to ten. Yes. We have full gun range with JR 15. Yes. <laughs> you can rent them or bring your own. We yes. <laughs> sell bullets. Oh, you shouldn't have told me that. You don't have a problem. Oh, I, now I can't go to the grocery store at all because there's a lot of little people <laughs> in these little cars. Yes. <laughs> I, well, I was thinking about you because I like Vanita be grinning up in some toddler's face. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, see, I have, to, I have to tell my friends about this too, people I know, because I think we, you know, we have to spread yeah. this news because this, this is a, this is a, a, a big development. I've never heard anything like these, it. These people have really lost their mind, and and I mean, nothing um, like it. I've never heard anything like it in my life. That, that was one one thing that got me kind of down and then um there was another article by this this uh uh white woman a harvard professor where she was just talking about the effect of nuclear weapons and how you know really what that means is that Nobody, you know, other than Russia and the U.S., have the capacity to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't let anybody get more nuclear weapons, and I'm happy about that. But, you know, what it means is really any country, any community, any anybody that wants to try to defend themselves. <laughs> Um, you know, the, the arsenal stacked against us are, are just so tremendous. But, you know, I have capacity to find a silver lining where there ain't none. <laughs> and I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm shocked because you this evening. Normally I can't, you know me. I'm like, but wait a minute. Stop being so optimistic. <laughs> That's not what I think. You know, when I when I when I think back on history, terrible, terrible. human human history, you know, long before we had written history, but as just all of the time that humans have been on this earth, um, you know, there's always been some big bully exercising you know, outsized control over their little village, mm -hmm. you know, their, their community. Mm -hmm. And people have, I guess, have always been fearful. You know, nobody wants to just die. Nobody wants mm -hmm. to volunteer to go up against a crazy bully. But so I guess, you know, we just have fallen into a pattern of letting the bullies have their way. And now, you know, it's gotten to the point where they're arming their toddlers with <laughs> JR-15s. And so, you know, I don't know. I, it, just, it, it, it just feels like they're really not going to be happy until they completely destroy the earth. And so the silver lining for me is maybe that's what humans have to go through to evolve in, you know, so many millions of years on some other planet um, with, with, you know, memories deep in our DNA about how we behaved on this planet. Because it just, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. Another, another story that has me a little down. There was, um, I don't know, some kids, some teenagers broke out in rioting in Union Square a few days ago here in New York. And I don't know, it was some black guy who's an influencer. I couldn't call his name if you paid me, but he's got millions of followers online and the kids are all into him. And he said he was gonna be giving away free PlayStations. And I don't know what set it oh, off. Oh, yes, yes, I saw that. But something set it off. And those kids tore up Union Square. And I was just saying to myself, 
where is that outrage? Where is that energy? You know, when it comes to the danger that the world is in, why can't we seem to get it up over, you know, global boiling or any number of other things? But we don't. We don't. And yet some stupid PlayStation will become the spark (laughs) that will have folks ready to tear up. So I don't know. I just think we're just just really, really in a bad place. So I, I, you know... Chanda tried to end the book on a positive note talking to her mother. And I want us to end our discussions on a positive note. I'm just telling you, I'm not your best partner tonight. Well, you know, you, you, I mean, yeah, we have the positives. And I'm just saying that, yeah, we do have negative things going on. Lots of negative things going on. But today was just one of those positive things, uh, the visual. And just meeting some of, the, you know, Black professional scientists. That um, gave me a right. different and hope. What I was you know, it's kind of balancing. About, what I was thinking about as you were talking about that is, you know, there was a time in this country when Black Americans, because the law made it so, you know, had developed our own communities, our own Black Wall Streets. Um, you know, but it's not like you know, whether you're Native American or Black or whoever, it's not like you can just go off in your own community and be left the hell alone. Oh, no. Um, yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah. Because we're dealing with something crazy. You know, we're dealing with something crazy. And I just think that crazy... F- energy out there is not going to be satisfied until it has really destroyed the earth because I don't I, I, I don't really see humans um, developing the level of courage necessary um, to to turn things around you know and you know I hate to say that you know you know I hate to say it tomorrow I will say something else um but but you know but but yeah between optimism and pessimism there's realism and it's hard to know you know where you are because we all only like again your example of the doctors we all only see a limited amount of stuff and you know the way mass media has has fragmented everything and um put everything is now behind a paywall and you know we are all really getting very different views of reality Um, and so you know i i i i i can't envision how we get on the same page about anything with Mm -hmm. that much that much discrepancy going on about about what we think is real what we think the facts are oh i also wanted to say about this guy um this influencer who who, uh was involved in the the riot in uh, new york he was arrested on the spot and Mm. charged with incite inciting a riot (laughs) a black guy Well, well he had no permit right and we all know whether you're in New York or you little okie dokie town, that right. you need a permit to have any kind of those mass functions or social functions. It could be 20 people. Actually, they have a limit, a minimum right. requirement you know, when you're dealing with um, events. After that minimum, you have to have a permit. He did not have that. He went to oh, social is that, is that why Donald Trump didn't get arrested on the spot for inciting a riot on January 6th? 
No, the reason why Donald Trump, that's a whole different situation, <laughs> didn't get arrested <laughs> for starting to ride on January 6th is because he's a punk ass white man. And see, in this country, <laughs> when you're a punk ass white man, you can pretty much do what you want to because the punk ass white man is the one that wrote the laws to oppress everybody else. So Donald Trump had white privilege. This Negro, AKA black man, AKA color person, AKA whatever's thinking correct, he knew full well that you had white influencers. That's all social media or TikTok, or you name it, Snapchat, whatever, every. All, most of them are white influencers making millions. I guarantee you they would have more leadway than we would. And that's not saying because he, because he was a black influencer. Yes, he was wrong. He did not have a minute. He, he definitely broke the law there. That's why they arrested him. Because it wasn't because of the, he didn't actually incite the riot, but because of what he failed to do. No control. Because when you have a permit, they have police, you know, if it's, it's approved, then they, you know, you may pay for it. But they have security there. They have things organized to try to prevent these things. Well, yeah, and I was just glad I wasn't there because I'm in that area quite frequently because all yes. a lot of my doctors are in New yes. York Square. And that's what I'm saying. I'm afraid to go anywhere because I could get you. You could you, be, you be a victim of circumstances and stop and shop. Like I said, you ain't gonna go far, especially with topless carrying J. Hey, right, fifteen. But I'm saying the teenager teenage crime is so bad. It's so bad now. It's it, I mean you wouldn't even believe it. And that's everywhere. It, I can speak definitely from Connecticut way up to Maine. Now there is no town, no matter how economic, no, that makes nothing, no difference about whether they're wealthy, whether they're poor, is exempt. From teenage crime now. They're walking in stores broad daylight, smash and grab with customers in the store, in the mall, in the middle of a shopping day. New, uh, New Haven. I, you know, when I was a little girl, I took trains from New Jersey to Philadelphia every weekend, you know, to my godmother's town. I'm eight, nine years old. Catch the bus, get off the train station, get on Amtrak, get off at 30th Street Station, catch a cat. No, really. New Haven, which is a cool place, it's smaller. We, you know, we, the United States has smaller, cool cities. I mean, New Haven is very uh, cultural. You know, you got Yale there, and, and you got the Quinby, all the Quinby and all these universities up in that area. The same thing that happened at the train uh, Union Station. Um, at our train station that happened about a week ago, they bust out fighting the New Haven train station. What? Teenagers, they had a baby brawl inside, outside the spill, inside the New Haven train station. And the, really people were just shocked. I was shocked. What, do you know what ignited it or what it was about? Uh, they didn't say exactly what it was about. Um, it had nothing to do with, with the, the transportation facility itself. You know, in other words, one of my angry because the train wasn't on time. One of my angry because this. No, it was. <laughs> well, you know, they're killing like, they're going to ERs. Because <laughs> see, people, people got to, I really shouldn't be laughing. I feel so ashamed for, for laughing. But you have to laugh. It's, it, it's, it's a nervous laugh. Because I don't know what else to do. <laughs> people going to ERs. Now, we all know no matter what ER you go to, Especially if you go in the full moon, new moon, anything that looks round all the way, <laughs> or you go on the weekend, it's going to be a way. You know, it really is. Unless you, you know, now they shoot up the ER because, you know, they tired of waiting. That person yeah. ain't bleeding. They're not having a heart attack or a stroke. They walk yeah. up in the ER and they think they're in, a, in their primary care physician office because that's what they use it as a lot of people, particularly poor people. And they shoot the ER. So they got I, know, I, I posted so, something yesterday where they're saying that the healthcare are. field has more uh, worker injuries and deaths than than any other sector, including well, the police. I believe that. 
because you know, I believe it. It's not like they're lying because I, I'm telling you, um, healthcare workers, I couldn't be a healthcare worker. I mean, look, look how healthcare workers were treated during COVID. And that was another form of violence that was committed on them. Send them into death chambers, but not the right equipment to treat people that were, were deadly contagious with a disease, with a virus that we knew nothing about. Mm -hmm. Abortion clinic. Yeah. It's not about abortion, that's really your business. Yeah. But you can't just go around doing what you wanna do because you don't feel a certain way about something. How many yeah. doctors and nurses and, and innocent people that are sitting in abortion clinics waiting for medical care have been killed? Yeah. And they're shooting them up, the anti-abortion people. I mean, you can't go anywhere and be safe. I mean, I with New Haven. It's, it's New Haven from my house to 26 minute drive. Normally when I, if I go, when I go to Yellow Haven, I can either park in the parking lot it's large, it has about five or six stories, and I ain't about that life. So I can get valet, which is expensive, but safer. Safer. I don't want to be walking mm -hmm. or, you know, back to garages, getting on elevators. I don't know who I'm on the elevator, but you know what garages look like. So I can get a valet parking. So I can get up in the front, right where the door is. <clears throat> and somebody's going to kill me. It could happen. But it's going to be a whole lot of witnesses, all the valet people, the people inside with all the big windows that see me get killed. <laughs> but now, and there's no safety. I've always said, even being a patient in the hospital, you are so vulnerable in hospitals. You could be in a semi-private room, land, and that's, that's, not, that's always the way it is, either private or semi-private. Land with somebody, you don't know that person. Yeah. You don't know that person's friends that's coming to see them. Yeah. And then and then now the hospital's reimbursement also from certain, uh, especially the government, like Medicare. And Medicare really sets the tone for all insurance companies as far as reimbursement. I just read an article that, they, you know, they expect, and they, they've always done that, but now it's really bad because even with public school systems, anything, it's all contingent on you know, teaching for the test to get money for that district. The same with hospitals. Hospitals are supplemented by government. Mm -hmm. If they weren't supplemented, we wouldn't have any hospitals. Mm -hmm. And now they're going by as a part of their overall categories for how much you your hospital is supplemented. So what they're doing is not only are the healthcare workers put at risk, but they're saying, although you put at risk, you still got to be very careful how you touch and go. Even if you think Jack and Ripper's right there, you still got to be very careful how you handle them. Because if it happened not to be Jack and Ripper, cause, and you won't know until you slit your throat, mind you, then if, <laughs> then if, then when it comes time, if either that person decided they want to write a bad review for you, it can affect your reimbursement and your 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 federal subsidy. That's a fact. And this also show you how Google's, we have Yelp, we have all the social media outlets for, for people to give their opinions um, and uh, to uh, rate your services. People don't understand. I've seen it and know it dealing with the business. It can make you or break you. But now when you have actually insurance companies that are judging you by how, okay. I can mean, work in healthcare. You have some sick dead people if you depend on Vanita. Cause you can't watch your back at the same time you're taking care of us. No. <laughs> well, let's let's look at another at another question. It's just crazy. Now, now that I've worked myself into <laughs> depression. Don't do that, Michelle. Come on, now. you gotta be optimistic. Oh well, it's hard. It's hard. Chanda, number two, Chanda Prescott Weinstein shared her personal vision of freedom. She wrote. This is what freedom looks like. Freedom looks like being able to think about Lagrangians and how to craft 
new and interesting ones to solve problems like dark matter and dark energy without worrying about cops killing black people. Freedom looks like joking around with a fellow cosmologist about how she doesn't feel comfortable with Lagrangians at all. And then slipping into a conversation about the latest Star Trek series and my annual trips to the Star Trek convention. Freedom looks like knowing that black girls, especially including dark skinned ones, trans ones and disabled ones will grow up to find freedom in a Lagrangian and the symmetries that govern particle uh -huh. physics because their conditions make it possible. Freedom uh, looks like knowing that they won't be raped or experience domestic violence along the way. Freedom looks like knowing that they can have children and not face professional repercussions. Freedom looks like knowing that they will survive childbirth at the same rates as white women. Freedom looks like Conoco we autonomy and all of us having access to our ancestral intellectual histories. Freedom looks like the dark night sky and everyone having a chance to look at it, wonder about it, and know it. Uh, questions. Do you like China's vision of freedom? What does freedom look like to you? In at least three sentences, please, please describe your freedom dream as historian Robert, Robin D.G. Kelly describes them. Do you think it's important to have a personal vision of freedom? What are some things we might do to stimulate freedom dreams in children? Do you think all humans dream of freedom? Do you think humans mostly desire or mostly fear freedom? What are some reasons people might fear freedom? What would the African-American community look like today if people like Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, and Rosa Parks had not dreamed of freedom? Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> King Jr. had a dream. How close are we to reaching the mountaintop King dreamed of? King once said, you can kill the dreamer, but you can't kill the dream. Did King's dream die when he was assassinated? The Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. Proverbs 29, 18. Must we be religious to see the value in vision? What is the vision in the African-American community? And just as importantly, what are some things we could do today to bring this vision to life? So vision, freedom dreams. Uh, yes, I like uh, Chanda's dream. Um, I'm thinking about the King question, did the dream die with King? Uh, no, I don't think that it died, <clears throat> but um, I do think Black people went through a very long oh, period oh. of grieving, mourning, um, and, and, and and fear, you know, I think that it, it did have a certain chilling effect um, that, it, that it did slow down the progress of the movement. Um, but, you know, I think the dream is, is still there um, for, for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, we're trying to find new and creative ways of, of um, <clears throat> you know, of, of both honing the vision and figuring out how to bring the vision to life. We're dealing with, you know, really 
very, very complex stuff. And we always have been. Um, because human beings are, are complex. Um, you know, so that's why I always talk about a 500 year plan, which really in the, in the, at the rate of human progress, even 500 years is not a long time. <laughs> you know? enough time. I, yeah, because. Yeah, no, we, definitely not. We've been, you know, moving along at a snail's pace, really. Well, um, we just got set back uh, how many decades? Yeah. By yeah. you know who. So now we got to start the meter back again. It's happening over and over and over. Potential. So the 500 year plan is, is going to turn the 2000 year plan because we have to keep starting over. Now we are set back, I feel like more than 50, 60 years. We just shy of being set back to the probably 40s. And that's intentional, very intentional. As anybody, I, I can't say that. I always use that term and I know better now. They don't assume what people should know. Now we're under attack, but you know, I mean, maybe the silver lining, the good news about that is that anybody <sighs> that was living in the delusion that we were in a post-racial era, you know, that the problems have been solved. Um, you know, hopefully by now they can see that that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not true. And they can come on and, you know, add their brilliance to try to figure out some of these complex questions. I don't know, let's say about that. Um, I think we, I, I, it's, a, it's really difficult, more difficult now because at some point we had some sense of discipline and control. So even if things were moving at a slower pace, we still had some sense of discipline and control over ourselves, yeah, but not society. That. You know, I mean, like I'm, I'm getting the image of um, a mice, a mouse um, going mm -hmm. around inside a, a, a spinning wheel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if the spinning wheel is moving at a rather slow pace, mm -hmm. you, you can see the mouse, you know, being able to keep up and, and you know, he, he's riding with it. But if all of a sudden you take that, you know, that that spinning wheel from 10 miles an hour to, you know, 500 miles an hour, now the, the mice is bouncing all around with the cage and, you know, getting all busted up and all, and all that kind of thing. And so, yeah. We, you know, we, 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 we did have discipline um, in ways we don't have it, but so much more is going on now that, you know, earlier generations did not have to deal with. Um, and just the pace of change, which doesn't just affect Black people, you know, it's, it, it's, it's affecting all of us. That's, that's what I'm saying, exactly. Society as a whole, at some point, there's always gonna be racism and discrimination and bias and so, you know, since Jesus died, we know that. What we try to do is minimize it and try to control it as much as we possibly can. You're never gonna stamp it out. It's never gonna happen. If you have 100,000 years, it's not gonna happen. But we try to do on a daily. My, my dream, my dream is that, you know, that, yeah, the day would come, you know, even if it's a hundred thousand years, the, the day would come um, when, when all humans um, 
could live together peacefully oh, on Michelle. this earth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I was telling you, I had a good conversation the other day with uh, a young man at a, at a, uh, a little uh, store I go to. And um, he's, he's some kind of Middle Eastern and he's a Muslim. Yeah. And he was telling me about how, you know, his, his belief as a Muslim is that mm-hmm. all people are the same. We all deserve love and love everybody. And, um, and that's what he's always tried to do. And, and, but he was asking me, he was telling me about how some black men had robbed his store Mm-hmm. And a black woman had, you know, uh, g- gotten real nasty with his wife, who speaks no English, because she kind of bumped into the black woman in a grocery store. Yeah. So he's he's asking me <laughs> to help him understand what's up with black people. <laughs> oh. Now, see, that's that's that, that's that's so wrong. And, you know, the sad part about it is you really can't help a gentleman. You have to ask him how much time you have. Is it the same amount of time that took us to get here? Is that the same amount of time it's going to take me to try to even begin to explain to you why these things happen? And I talked to him for a good long while. That's so sad. I, I tried. Poor thing. But he told me he had read, he, he, said, I, he said, I've read Black History. Oh, a couple of weeks ago, I did some reading for about an hour. <laughs> oh, you know, but you know what? You know what? I'm not going to knock him. No! Because at least, at least he's curious. If it wasn't nothing but for an hour. Right. I got, well, we got white folks in this country, as we know, because that's been in the news and social media, that don't want to read uh, uh, Black History for a minute. Don't want right. to see it. Don't want to know it. Don't want right. to talk about anything before the 70s. Right. Right. So I'm trying, I'm doing my best to try to explain to him. Sure. That, you know, how this diversity thing really, ain't no working too good. <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, I mean, it's so sad. And the poor thing. You know, and that's the environment that he was in his country. What country was he from? I don't remember. It was somewhere in the Middle East. Yeah, well, in his area where he, you know, and of course, going along with his religion, you know, maybe it was that whole, you know, maybe, I'm sure it was that peaceful thing and they teach each other one, uh, to love one another. But I'm sure if he go three blocks down <laughs> and four blocks over from where he came from, then probably it's a different story. Right within the right within the race. Right, right. Race does not exist, as we all know, but since that's the word we're using, I'm gonna say right within this race. Yeah. So apparently he's also been in a bubble, probably because of his religion and um all his life. And his mom and daddy been that same religion all their life. And maybe that's what they know is peace, love, and happiness. But he's yeah, but a nice... I really, I really liked his curiosity. Yes, yes. You know, his his, I think it's wonderful. Yes. And, and I felt like I had to try to talk to him. Sure. Um, because, sure. you know, but it took, it took quite a bit of time. It took energy. I didn't really get yes. Um, but I know that unless we do that kind of thing, you know, you're not born knowing somebody else's culture and history and all of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and so, so, so I think it's important that, that we try to talk to, talk to each other especially when you have somebody that is telling you they're interested, they're receptive. They want to know, yes. They want to know, yeah. You know, and it's not just a, a, a black-white issue, of course, although it appears to be that way in this country, 
But do we go, do, I mean, how many times as a black person, do I go up to, to a person from another culture and say, I'm curious to know why there's violence in your country. Right. I'm curious to know, want to know why there's a caste system mm-hmm. among the same people in your mm-hmm. country. We don't do that. Right. And that's another thing I always didn't under, quite understand. That it, it, it's everything turned to a black white issue, but we don't do that. Right. We are not curious for the most part about other people's culture. We don't go up and ask the Muslim person or a Hindu person or a Christian person why or Asian, or Asian what is your culture? But we have the expectations. And we really do. And I never understood that either, that people should know. Because they've suffered atrocities too, and still are. So I think, you know, I, I guess we also have put in a uh, value on certain people. Because we certainly Oh so, yeah, but it's a it's a it's a it's a slow tedious is. process and in yeah. this fast paced world you know mm-hmm. where where we're all like little mice on a on a ferris wheel spinning wheel for sure um it, it it's 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 very 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 challenging to make that kind of space that kind of time um in in your life and you know again that works to the advantage of the powers that be um you Mm. know that that works to those who who seek to divide and conquer Mm -hmm. you know it, it keeps us it keeps us um it keeps us separated so you know yeah um, i said so yeah my my freedom dream is that you know somehow with all this technology all of this babble you know all of these different ways to learn different languages and whatnot Mm -hmm. um that 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 we will reach a point um where 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 we really can increase the communication across cultures Mm -hmm. dramatically you know it's happening already you know i know it is i i know a lot of things are happening we just don't know because we don't have that information and that's what the show me like today again i thought i was at a black convention at the yale new haven Mm-hmm. I had never seen a black and brown convention. Let's put it that way. Because I'd never seen so many black and brown people, in other words, from other cultures, in one space. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and a small space. This is one surgical unit area. They have other floors, <laughs> but this is just one. I haven't seen that. Actually, I haven't seen that in my lifetime. It's unusual. It's unusual. Yep, unusual. So that was very good. So that's why I'm all positive today. I yes, yeah. I have renewed faith. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I I dream a world where toddlers do not have JR 15s Well, you know, I do, and I like little people. Now I gotta watch them again. Another thing. That's why we have time to to uh, uh, get, be uh, so but so curious about other cultures and things are going on because we got to watch three-year-olds now i can't believe we're having this conversation <laughs> but it's a, but that's where that's where realism comes in i know it's real because i've heard too many times and read articles where it is a passage of just being born in alabama for you to have a gun when you're nine, a gun. It's not unusual to buy them a gun when they're nine. I mean, of course, we well, they've, past lowered the age. they've lowered the, the rite of passage age. Yeah, and semi-automatics Two. now. Yeah, before it was like a shotgun. Now it's semi-automatic. They moved up a lot. I feel so crazy. I, I, I just, and people are living a long time. That is not good. 
My father will be 91 years old in a couple of weeks. He'll be 91. My mother's in her 80s. It's not looking good for me. Yeah, you're going to be, be around long after I have told you adios. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm going to call that toddler. <laughs> and make him do my dirty work. <laughs> and they won't even go to jail. The, the, the child won't even go to jail. Because yeah. they, 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 yep, and that way I can just have him take me out. And you can't, you're not going to jail the toddler. Because, because it's not their, that's not their responsibility. It's not their, you know, what are they going to do if their parents bought them a, you know, AR, a JAR 15 when they're three? So that's the plan. We get every day we change our plans, but this is also about some positive things. Yes. Okay, that, okay, Chandra, I hope she's not watching this video. Because. <laughs> They're trying to try to say, okay, <laughs> let's get back to dark matter. Uh, yeah. yeah, we'll see. At least, you know, because of, of her interest in science, she can really go off in her head to another universe and just leave this planet. And <laughs> That's true. And then she can her she days. But that, you know what? That's why I, I really appreciate her because what she does is go to Star Trek conventions. Yeah, you know she got to take herself away from this for a minute. And I'm 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 all for, I'm all for Chandra. That's my kind of person. That's my kind of person. <laughs> hey, she needs to break. She needs to break my mind. She needs to be taken out of this realism into a little bit something else. Yeah. And she goes to Starbucks chat conventions. I think that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling her. I, I, yeah. That person. I'm yeah. feeling that person. Yes. Yeah. Definitely feeling I've that never, person. I've never been to one, but maybe I will add that to my bucket list. You should. Mm -hmm. And they also have conventions where you dress up like little bunnies on the weekend. That might be interesting. Well, they probably too. <laughs> have them right here in New York. I mean, I know New oh, York they do. has the Comic Con thing. I've never been oh. to that either. One day yeah, I no. was at work. I was working on uh, West Thirty Eighth Street, mm. and this guy walked. What was across the street from me? I was standing outside talking to somebody, and I see this guy crawling down the building. In a oh. Spider Man suit. You gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. And I was like, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> I, said, I said to my coworker, <laughs> he's like, well, you know, they got Comic Con right down the street because we work down the street from the Javits Center. Mm -hmm. And next thing I know, I start noticing all these crazy people <laughs> going oh, up yeah. down the street. Yes. It's, it's called cosplay. Actually, I know a person that I really do. I, I adore them. And um, and they go to cosplay conventions. And it really is very, um, they make their own costumes. Um, now, I wouldn't even call a costume this person. But they're very talented. Very talented in making them. And um, they're very smart. They're the most one, you know, the coolest people, the nicest people, the most wonderful people, the most open-minded uh, person, and um, that I know. It's a theme. Well, they are. They ask that I call them he. Okay. And you obliged. Of course. That's what they want to be called. If I'm not, if I don't call them by their name, they ask me to call to address them as he. Um, and I love them dearly. They, they're twenty, maybe twenty one, but they make me smile. And when I go to um, get my gas at the gas station, we have these wonderful conversations. They tell me about different things, show me pictures of different things. When they go to the conventions, they show me pictures, you know, of, of the things that they made for the convention, the makeup 
they put on is like extraordinary. They should be in, in Hollywood as a makeup artist making boots with money. Um, and they own snakes and they own all kinds of exotic things. And, see, and whenever, I, you know, I always, no matter what day I'm having, if I even have a cloudy day, I can go talk to that person. It is, you know, it's like being at the Star Trek convention. It just make me smile. Make me smile so much. Well, I have always liked to keep my feet grounded in reality, but you know, it's not good when when you got toddlers running around with automatic weapons. uh, Is it too late for me to become an alcoholic? Well, you know, remember my physician told me, and I won't call any names because I really adore him. He said, "You know, Vanita, I don't know how healthy it is. You're one of my best patients." But um, we are in some really cray cray. And I commend you for doing as well as you have do- you've done mentally. But it is not healthy for you to be present all the time. But because my illness, I don't, you know, the alcohol, do alcohol. He said, no, no, no. That was a couple years ago, this, this Christmas. No, mm-mm. You need to have a glass of wine. I'm not going out of town on the holiday. The high holidays, or Rosh Hashanah is over. Call me if you need me. I don't think you will. But you need to have you some wine because you can't go around like this. That's coming from a physician with a person that has a chronic illness <laughs> telling me that I am present too much and it's not healthy. Well, yeah, that's how I'm feeling. To start doing because I felt better since then. Once in a while, I have a little time in the wine because you know, if you don't drink, you don't have that much in the house. Is when you have a little tiny bit of wine because I mean, I feel like I've been flying, I eat mean, off this much wine, but it does make it relax me. And um, a lot of things don't bother me as much, at least for the moment. You got a couple of hours where I don't think about it, I don't think about the, you know, worrying about toddlers and grocery right. stores, and no more book group. I want to become an alcoholic. That's that's my new, that's my freedom dream. That's what I'm telling you. I mean, look, during COVID, they closed everything down but the liquor store. Yeah. I know in Connecticut, our government like, oh, no. We shut down state buildings, city buildings, schools, (laughs) liquor stores. We're not doing that. (laughs) Mm -mm. The hours didn't even change. (laughs) <laughs> no. And they, they opened put, up the smoke shops. <laughs> and opened up the smoke shops. They put the glass up. They have to change them. these laws. <laughs> yeah. Even, even the small package stores, they had their nice glass up to, to protect them. And they had their mask on with the glass up. And you had to kind of, you know, that little car machine outside of where they were. And you only could have a couple people there at a time. But um, they did not close those liquor stores. That wasn't going to happen. They don't care what kind of COVID came through here. <laughs> we into that again. That's what we, that's what the state does is drink. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Anything to add to your freedom dream? No. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I you know, it's today, you know, today I'm right here. Maybe tomorrow I'll feel a little differently about Rather than having peace, that's the only freedom dream as a whole that it's a most hard of question. us have. I, I have to do mine on, on with pen and paper. Me too. I can't um, just, you know. Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah, hard me to as well. To, but I but I like Chanda's. Uh, you know, those those are the basic those are the basic things that I want as well. Um, I I don't give a damn about a Lagrangian, but you know. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. I, and, and and they have to always throw the extra in there. I was, you know, I can't think about that because I think about Lagrangia. I can't think about what my hope is for freedom. Right. Because she threw, but they threw that in there. <laughs> right, and they threw that in there, and then while I'm trying to think about what my hope is, I'm thinking about that, and then her definition in layman's terms, which you still don't understand. <laughs> I'm thinking about that. So yeah, I need time alone, you know, by myself to read through it and write it down. What yeah, my what freedom looks like to me, and what my freedom dream is. Yeah, Chandra. 
She know that we're not that bright. Why would she do that? Why would that happen? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's almost like, it's, it's like you're taunting us. You know, <laughs> we made it through chapter one through four. Yes. And why does she do it? Right, because you some... said, but don't forget who I am. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the monster says to have a little peace now. We did well. And we and, should, and, and, and hopefully they are proud of us. Because most folks wouldn't last. Well, and at the end, we can't even think of a good answer, a question in peace. Here we go. Look, right. <laughs> yeah, I was reading an interview that she had done with somebody. And, you know, oh, and so one, so of, one of the things she was saying was, she's like, you know, I'm not trying to turn anybody into a physicist, you know, but mm. if you if you read through those chapters, you know, and now you you've heard of a neutrino. Yes. You know, and she's like, that's great. So I'm like, yeah, you know, mm. I got neutrinos all going all through me all day. Long. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that, yeah, that's what they said. I'm not trying to turn everyone to a physicist, but this is what I know to be my truth. And if you're interested, here's some references in the back of the book. Lots of them. <laughs> Call yeah. me sometimes. Call me sometimes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. I, I am going to look through the references because I'm sure it's some interesting, uh, lots of interesting things here. I don't have enough time in a lifetime to read it all. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's some interesting things there. Absolutely. Let's see if we can get it. Oh, it's almost 7 um, 20. Maybe we should talk about right. our overall assessment of the book. Um, let me give let me read what Gio said. Okay. Uh, what did Gio say? Uh, Gio said, my final thoughts on the book are that uh, Chanda honored her mother and grandmother well. And she says the quote from question four says it all for me. Um, and the quote she's talking about is where her, is where her mother Margaret said, used to always tell Chanda, the world, the, the world needs to know that the universe is bigger than the bad stuff that happens to us, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, so yeah, so Gio had a positive reaction to the book. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then she left us with this song. I'm going to play you just a little snippet of it. Mm -hmm. Um... <coughs> See if I do I need to share my screen. Yeah, let me share my no, I'm not gonna share my screen. Um it's called uh I'm not sure what it's called. Wes. I don't know what is the name and what is the name of the song. It's done in the Duala language, D-U-A-L-A. And I'll give you a couple of chords here. Can you hear it? So I can hear it now. I can't hear it well. Okay, you couldn't hear it well? No, it's old in and out. I can't hear it well. Okay. So <clears throat> it's 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 sung in this other language, but the words are Geo gave us a translation. Um it says uh I guess it's called love song. Mm -hmm. There is a love, a feeling so strong coming mm -hmm. to the world from up above where you and me and all nature belong. Here is a song, a heart in a music so fine for everyone dancing all along, a sound of joy that is so divine 
Come on and dance in a love song all together forever. Come on and dance in a love song all together forever. Join the world in a love song. People are singing, everyone loving free. And it goes on like that. <clears throat> and Gio was contributing, contributing it um, because she wanted to end on a hopeful note. And she said this was the most hopeful song she could find. Um, so any songs come to mind for you related to this book? Marvin Gaye, what's going on? Mm. He was a musical genius and everything that he wrote is relevant and has been relevant since the day that I heard it, which has been decades ago. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm yeah okay well i will add that um to the playlist and if you think of anything else um there's there's a playlist set up on youtube on the black feminist youtube page okay uh, called music of the disordered cosmos and it includes mm -hmm. um, a playlist by um chanda which was <clears throat> only available in the Kindle edition of the book, which Gio had. Mm -hmm. So she shared the playlist with me. Cool. Um, and there's, it also includes 15 songs by this woman named Corey Inyard, um, who they describe as a professional song selector. And PBS had her put together a playlist of songs related to Black women's empowerment. So I included all of those. And then um, my own songs that I have thought of related to various chapters mm -hmm. um, are in there. So I'll add what's going on and I'll add Gio's song, which is called, I think it's called Elaine, A-L-A-N-E. Um, and um, uh, it's a real upbeat <laughs> tempo. What about um, your overall thoughts about the book itself? I thought the book was. I thought the book was very good. Um, again, um, the first uh, few chapters or so. I learned a lot of new things. You know, of course, we went to school, we knew just very minimum compared to what they scientists have discovered since then. So I learned a lot uh, about uh, science and physics. Um, and she did a very good job of trying to break it down to layman's terms. And of course, the only struggle was looking it up and trying to, you know, yeah, I wish I had more time actually. And to go back over it and spend the time to cross-reference um, because it was very interesting. I think she did a very good job. And I'm, in physics, it's, it's extremely uh, difficult. And she's a genius. Um, so I appreciated that. And I appreciated um, how she intertwined um, what's life, whether it's uh, sexism, whether it's feminism, whether it's racism, and she intertwined all that into physics. That was very interesting. Mm -hmm. And I like the way she said her writing is, um, the writing is very uh, engaging. Mm -hmm. There really were no dull moments. And just when you got really got engrossed into maybe something she would say in the paragraph, then she would throw something else and kind of, I just thought the book was very well written, number one. Mm -hmm. um, and I look forward to maybe reading uh, other books that she, either she has written or will be writing. And I'm sure this, this can't be the last one. Yeah, I, th I believe this is her first book. And I believe the first one? She, I do believe she's working on another one right now. Yeah, I, I, I hope... I definitely hope they they oh, they work on it. Mm 
because I, I just think that I'm looking forward um, at some point to, yeah. uh, yeah, seeing what else yeah. they have to say. Um, I think it might be called the edge of space time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure about that. But yeah, well, I, I enjoyed it a lot too. Um, I found it um, very stimulating. I learned, like you, I learned a lot about mm-hmm. physics. Um, I had more time than you. So I did, you know, really go, not deep, but you know, deep enough to to really try to understand um, Mm -hmm. um, some of those those concepts, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and, you know, and some little bit of it um, it has stuck with me, you know, Um, but it was stimulating and that's why I was able to uh, write so many questions and um you know share so many resources because um she was giving me a lot to to work with so um you know so i'm glad it's i'm glad it's a book that we took our time with Mm um and um um you know, and just um, I, you know, I I I consider myself a, a kind of an empath, and you know, I was just kind of feeling the the sorrow um, that she was expressing in 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 um you know in what her experience has been um in physics and and in dealing with you know these white folks um but you know as her mother said to her at one point that she talks about in the postscript um you know, the, when she was thinking about dropping out of school, you know, with her mother that that, that um, explained, you know, you that goes on everywhere. <laughs> you know, that right. goes on everywhere. That's the world we're in. And so I'm, I'm really, really glad that she stuck with it because um, we need people like that. And, you know, as I think I said before, she strikes me as exactly the kind of person that that people who were marching in the civil rights era, exactly what they hoped would happen, that they would knock down doors and people like Shonda would walk through and remain committed to the struggle. You know, um, it doesn't do us any good um, you know, and I, I, I completely understand it takes a lot to survive in these environments because they don't want us there. They've never wanted us there. And that's the point. Um, but if you're there and all of your effort goes to surviving um, and you don't ever look back, Mm-hmm. Um, or look at at how you can use your own life to make some change in that industry. Um, then, yeah, we really never do make any progress. So I'm glad that she sees that. Um, there's a part of me though that wonders, you know, um, like she talked about Elmer Imes in this last chapter, um, mm. the, 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 and, you know, it just makes me wonder if, if somebody with her brilliance would be better served at an HBCU versus, you know, 
versus these white institutions where you do have to spend all your energy <laughs> either fighting to survive or fighting trying to change the environment, you know? Um, but I think she's up to the task and that, that you know, that came through clearly in her writing that, that she's a fighter, you know? So... Very nice job, Chanda Prescott Weinstein. I second that motion. Very good. All Meanwhile, right. I'll, uh, we'll be chatting in the next couple of weeks. Um, when Georgia will be able to join us, hopefully. And we can start making our plans for the next book. Well, I, yeah, maybe, unless, you know, this alcoholism thing works out for me. Well, see, that's, yeah, I forgot. You are going to be doing, a, you know, a little <laughs> you are going to take up an, another activity. A new hobby. <laughs> yeah. A new hobby. Yes. And that's the good thing about being mature, a.k.a. as you get older, old people. You can explore all your hobbies. Absolutely. Don't worry about anything. Don't worry, you know, if you become an alcoholic, you just become an alcoholic. You get your book and <laughs> keep it moving. Well, that's what most of the world seems to be doing, so. <laughs> I know, I know, you know, it's, it's, you came and, yeah, the, the righteous thing is over. <laughs> it's over. It's over. It's over. <laughs> Let somebody else do it now. Someone else's turn to uh, walk down that righteous path. I'm walking down it for quite a few decades now. I'm tired. Yeah. Turn to the bottle. <laughs> call it a day. Turn to the bottle. Call it a day. Anyway, All right. I'll talk later. Um, okay. It's been real. Have okay. a good night. You too. Hope to do. Okay.